micro budget magic time. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, micro budget magic time. My name's Dom Douglas here, and you're on my YouTube channel. And here's the thing I like Magic the Gathering, but I kind of fell out of sorts with Standard over the last couple of years because it's too expensive. And I feel it's really hard to actually get into the game in Standard because of the expensiveness of it. So, what if I was to say, do crazy micro budgets? Brews. And by micro budget, I mean $5 or under. And I'm going by TCG player pricing. And I'm not just doing the first listing and then saying, okay, this card's a penny. No, I'm actually digging at least four to five pages sometimes to find where the average median is. So these are not market price per se on TCG player, but we're at, I'm at least digging five to six pages deep in just to make sure that I'm getting rid of the low ball outliers and then trying to get rid of the high priced versions of these cards. So every price you see here is curated by me by just digging through TCG players, a couple of pages on their sellers, just to make sure that somebody's not trying to like, basically I'm not trying to like say, Hey, Yoshin frontliner is a penny because the first listing was a penny. <laughs> that being said, we are also do trying to do, focused brews here on budget on micro budgets we're doing the first one we're doing is soldiers soldiers is a great mechanic but for literally a fraction of the price we can get a budget brew using almost the same archetype and sometimes the same key cards too let's not forget sometimes we need to use some of those cards that make that deck click and work so we have to sacrifice the budget as well on some of these things. That being said, this deck's total is $4.80 on TCG Player. And on Magic the Gathering Online, MTGO, I'm not even joking, and this was an accident because I had to readjust the deck today, which is February 19th, so tomorrow this video is going up. Uh, it is $0.69 cents on Magic the Gathering Online. MTGO, this is a 69 cent deck. This is less than a dollar, and you're pretty much just paying a penny a card. By the way, this is for standard, so it's best two out of three, so you can actually buy this. Go to your local gaming store on a Friday night if they're doing standard, and play this. And by the way, sideboards included, and that causes, that's going to cause a few issues later on in a couple of these decks, because I have to do account for sideboards as well. So let's get started here. We are doing micro budget soldiers. Blue white soldiers is a great mechanic. It's got awesome synergies in it and it's a very powerful potent card. But for the price of a Muriel, or actually uh for the for uh 10% of the cost of a Muriel, we're going to make a a budget deck with soldiers here. And we're going to start with Yoshin Frontliner. It is an artifact for one mana of any color, and when it attacks, another target creature we control gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. It's also got Unearth, so if it's in the graveyard, we can use its Unearth cost, which would be a white mana, to bring it back on the battlefield, give it haste, attack, and get another creature to at least pump it up one more time. Now, that being said, when it at the end of that turn, when it's been unearthed, we do have to exile the card. But Yoshin Frontliner is a 10 cent card right now, and we're playing three of them. Then we're playing Survivor of Courtless. It is a 1-1 one, one for one white mana with first strike, but if it's in the graveyard, we can pay one and a white to exile it and scry two. The thing you're gonna notice here, finding card draw or ways to loot through our library on a budget like this is gonna be really hard, so we kinda have to think outside of the box occasionally. And Survivor of Corliss is one of those ways that we can think outside the box. It is also a two cent card, so it's still doing a great job in this deck. Alchemist Retrieval is a, for a blue or a blue and one other mana, but we'll get to that. For one blue, we can return a target non-land permanent we control to its owner's hand. So in the early game, we can use this as a, a bounce spell for our creature that we don't want dying or occasional combat tricks. But the main purpose of this is late game, bouncing any non-land permanent an opponent controls back to their hand. We're talking Sheridids. We're talking 
any of the scary cards out there right now. We're talking as much as possible. We want to bounce the best card our opponent played back to their hand. And Alchemist Retrieval is one of those cards that did spike. Uh, originally, when I had it, <laughs> when I made this deck, it was four cents. Now it's a quarter a pop. So, But it's so important in this deck that we do actually have to play three of them. Then we're playing Timely Interference. For one blue, and it's an instant with kicker one and red, which we're never doing because we don't play a single red source in this deck. Target creature gets minus one, minus zero till end of turn. If it happened to have been kicked, that creature blocks this turn if able. The last line of text is more important. Draw a card. We can negate one point of damage with this, but mainly we need a, a budget version of Consider. And right now, Timely Interference is an amazing budget Consider for two cents each. But also we need to draw cards. Then we're playing two Syncopates. This is another new addition to the deck as of today because when I looked, we were playing a Make Disappear and that spiked to 50 cents and it was a toss-up between the one Make Disappear or getting rid of two Alchemist Retrievals and Alchemist Retrievals is too important. We were already losing one at that point. So Syncopate is one blue and an X. For an instant, counter target spell unless its controller pays X. If that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. So if we get to counter the spell, whatever spell they bring, artifact, creature, uh, board wipe, whatever, we can get rid of it for the rest of that game and not have to worry about it again if we get to counter it. And Syncope is a six cent card at the moment. Then in the two drop slots for one and a white, we are playing Ambush Paratrooper for a one-two with flash and flying. Uh, and late game for five mana, we can pump all of our creatures plus one, plus one till end of turn. Ambush Paratrooper is a two cent card and the flash, we can play around with that. And you'll see when I start playing games with this deck. But Paratrooper is one of those games that we can end games with if we've got this massive board state and we just, you know, late game, just pump five mana in and make all of our one ones into two twos. And we can get in for those final little bits of damage. Then we're playing three Resolute Reinforcements. Uh, this is a 25 cent card, and for good reason. For one and a white, it's got flash. When it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 white soldier creature token. And you, you get two power on the board across two creatures. But in early game, we can timely interference it back into our hand and kind of do these weird loops along with another card that we're going to be showing in a little bit. But Resolute... Resolute Reinforcements is a key card in the Soldier's deck at the moment. Then we're playing 4 Curate. Uh, it's an instant for 1 and a blue, and Survey 2, then draw a card. So we kind of get to see if we like the top two cards or one of them, and just get to draw that card. Or if it's two lands and it's, you know, we flood it out, we can get rid of those two and hope that the third card that we get to draw, or the third card that we get to look at because we drew it, uh, is actually something that we need. And Curie is a five cent card at the moment. Uh, we're playing one copy of Disdainful Stroke. Uh, count for one and a blue for an instant counter target spell with mana four, mana value four or greater. Um, Sheridan exists. Uh, a lot of big bad monsters in this current version of Standard are at that four drop slot. So Disdainful Stroke is one of the ways that we can protect a plus with this type of deck. Uh, you'd need some counter spells in it. Then we are playing the all-star in this deck. Protect the negotiators. For one and a blue, instant with a kicker white. If this spell was kicked, create a 1-1 white soldier creature token. Counter target spell unless its controller pays one for each creature you control. We are always wanting to be kicking this spell. Because what happens is, the way the stack works with this spell, we cast it and kick it. We make a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token. That goes on the field. Then our opponent has to pay one for each creature. So if they have three mana available after they cast their spell, and we have three creatures on board and we kick protect the negotiators. It basically says counter spell. But even then, sometimes we play, it's just a counter just to get a creature on the board. And Protect the Negotiators is a 15 cent card and for good reason. And we're also playing four copies of Zephyr Sentinel. Zephyr Sentinel is one in a blue for a human soldier, 
2-1 Flash with Flying. When it enters the battlefield, return up to one target creature you control to its owner's hand. If it was a soldier, put a plus one plus one counter on Zephyr Sentinel. Every single creature we play is a soldier. So even Protect the Negotiators make soldiers. So yeah, we're always going to be bouncing stuff like Resolute Reinforcements, um, even a Yoshin Frontliner. You know, we can bounce any of our creatures as protection as well. Because it's got Flash, we can cast it at any time. And Zephyr Sentinel is a five cent card. And then we're just playing four Yoshin Tacticians. Uh, it's a human soldier for two white and a blue. Uh, other soldiers we, can, we control get plus one, plus one. And it is a three, four. Uh, this is a 10 cent card now. So this doubled in price recently from five cents to 10 cents. But it is a great card. And this is our top end. Uh, we have no three three drops in this deck. We are very low to the ground, flood the board, go wide strategy with hopefully a turn four Yoshin Tactician saving the day for us. We play 10 planes and 10 islands because we did not have any budget even for the basic coming to play tap lands. But that being said, we do have a sideboard. And let's switch to the sideboard shot right now. We are playing four runic shots. For one white for a sorcery with kicker blue, destroy target tapped creature. If this spell was kicked, scry two. It's obviously in our colors, and we have to go outside of the box once again to figure out what pieces of removal we can play. So we get a runic shot, and they are going for four cents a piece right now. We also play two more copies in the sideboard of Disdainful Stroke, because as I said before, Shira did um, many other four drops, Meryl, uh, a lot of the uh, Arch Fiends. A lot of the big, powerful cards from Brothers War and Phyrexia All Will Be One are four, four and above. And uh, we definitely need protection because if any of those four drops come out, we, we have no way to remove them <laughs> unless our opponent like attacks with it. Uh, we play four Essence Scatters in the side. And that's the counter target creature spell. Once again, we need counter spells. We need effective counter spells. And also, uh, as a Disdainful Stroke is still is still five cents, but Essence Scatter is an eight cent card, and it's basically one in blue for an instant to counter target creature spell. I don't like using certain counter spells that, like, say, counter non creature spell or counter target creature spell. But sometimes with a micro budget, we have to make concessions and we have to play Essence Scatters because creature based decks. Even th this will work in uh, mono red decks too, like creature based decks that want to that are faster than us. This will help us out. We play two copies of Captain's Calls uh, for three and a white for a sorcery. Create three one one white soldier creature tokens. Uh, once again, this is for those go wider strategies that we may be up against or fast mono red decks. Mono red kind of wrecks us. If it if it just immediately puts its foot on the accelerator. But if we get to turn four, Captain's Call can definitely help us out. Or even turn five, because if we have the uh, Yoshin Tactician now, we just effectively made six power on the board for four mana. So, you know. And then finally, uh, oh, by the way, Captain's Call is two cents. And then finally, Valorous Stance. Uh, it's for one and a white for an instant. Choose one. Target creature gets indestructible till end of turn. Cool, we can protect some of our stuff, but the second sentence is way more important. Destroy target creature with toughness four or greater. Once again, our biggest threats to our basically winning games are creatures with toughness four or greater. So this was originally Destroy Evil, and we played a whole playset of them. No, we played three of them, and they were a little under 20 cents at the time when I created this deck. Not anymore. When I went to do this video today and made sure to check all my pricing before, uh, it spiked to 50 cents because, uh, yeah. <laughs> Woo, uh, Destroy Evil is a really good card. So, once again, we had to make a concession. Had to get rid of those. Had to find a viable replacement, and Valor Stance is a great replacement. Almost does the same thing as Destroy Evil, too. Because we're basically only going to be casting it for the second line of text most of the time. That being said, this is once again a $4.80 deck on paper or on Magic the Gathering Online 
69 cents. We use 30 commons and 25 uncommon. So it's also arena safe as well. And that is, as I get the nicer view here, that is blue white soldiers micro budget here. That's the deck tech. Now let's get to some games. And uh, we are going to be playing this deck in standard. Standard play, best of three. Because I want to also get uh, at least a best of three game or two in with these videos just to show you proof of concepts and see what the deck does. And once again, this, these these are just four. Um, if you're new to Standard or new to Magic or you think you might want to get back into Standard and you don't want to like pay a lot of money, <laughs> the, the honest, the goodness, truth, the um, non-budget version of this deck is very expensive. The murals alone are like 30 bucks at this point still. We did keep a two lander with planes, but we do have a Zephyr Sentinel and we could, in worst case scenario, protect the negotiators. Instead, we get that so we can kind of play around here and resolute, have, uh, resolute reinforcements at the end of their turn. Also, our deck is less expensive than that Jet Mirror's Garden. Which I think is hilarious. Now we can just hold back, swing in, and here's the beauty of having the Protect the Negotiators in hand. We can counter any spell they want, that they can try to bring up. Adeline, but I think right now, I think we just syncopate. And we save the Protect the Negotiators. So we get another Protect the Negotiators. I'm fine with this because their next two turns, no matter what they play, we counter. We get to counter them. They're kind of surprised that we played a Syncopate in the main. And it also did, we did exile the Adeline too. So it looks like they're on the green-white tokens. And funny enough, one of the decks decks that I have for these micro budgets is actually a green-white token deck. And it's probably one of the best decks I've made. Infernal, Infernal Grass. So this time we get to protect the negotiators. Love it when a plan comes together. Because now, it's like death by a thousand cuts at this point. We could do one of two things. If they try to kill our resolute reinforcements again, we can bounce it with Zephyr Sentinel and do a very cheeky play. It's like one of my favorite plays to, to do with this deck. If, it, if the kill spell they want to cast costs more than three, I think we Zephyr Sentinel. All right, I'm okay with the Jida. Font of Hope. And if they activate anything or do anything, we Zephyr Sentinel back the Resolute Reinforcements, <laughs> then recast Resolute Reinforcements, and then lay down a Yoshin Tactician. Each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature. All right, this might seem a little silly because we're going to bounce the Resolute Reinforcements. It's still on the stack, so we do have to sacrifice the Zephyr Sentinel. Then we play the Resolute Reinforcements. This doesn't have First Strike. It only has Vigilance. Now we go for the Kill Shot. We lay down the Yoshin Tactician. They're going to take six damage. Never mind. They have a, they have a board wipe in hand, which is okay. Celebrity Fencer? That doesn't do it for him. It's just going with the Fanta Hope. 
I think we just swing out and then timely interference whatever they block. All right, we got game one, folks. <laughs> budget. <laughs> Micro budget soldiers. Now, they're on the token front. So they're going to be playing a lot of creatures. So... I don't know if they play anything. I don't know if there's anything we could take out. We might want to take out a disdain, the Disdainful Stroke, but do we replace that with an Essence Scatter? Or do we just keep, uh, you know, we'll take a Yoshin Tactician out, a Disdainful Stroke, pop down two Essence Scatters, and then call it a day. But you can see, it's a focused deck where it's got a theme it's got synergies for five dollars it can be done folks now are you gonna win a pro tour with this are you gonna possibly win a pro day with this probably not but will you have fun with this deck yeah most definitely you will have fun with this deck they're on the play so let's see what happens with our opponent's turn one because we have a front liner that we can play. Now, mind you, it's another target creature, so we can't make it a 2 2 whenever it attacks. Black. I did not see any black in their deck last game. Oh, yeah, I did. They had the Edict. Firing Overseer. All right. I could have countered it, but I think there's more important creatures in in this to counter. Do I go for mutually assured destruction here? No. They, they they took the two. All right. We do have an Essence Scatter. Protect the Negotiators. We'll still fire off only for one, though. So if it's a three-drop spell, if it costs three mana or less, we can't counter it. That is a wedding announcement. That hurts. That hurts. That hurts us. So we're... Oh. There, yeah, I should have. That's going to hurt us. I, th I think we might have just lost this game here. So we have to be, we have to try as best as we can to be quicker than them. But we do have a Protect and Negotiators counter up. Now they have five mana. The sky is welcome. Whenever one or more creatures mana three or less, enter draw a card only triggers once each turn. And is only under their control. Well, I think we timely interference the inspiring overseer. We played this first in case they got a crazy pump. Then we're going to play Ambush Paratrooper. I could, in fact, kill this. But if they have another piece of remove, if they have like a pump or a piece of removal, we got to make them use it. They did not. Unless they have like. Whisper of the Dross, but I don't... Oh, no. We got away with that one, folks. All right. Uh, I'm comfortable Yoshining tactic, Yoshin frontlining and going in for the swing while holding up a Protect the Negotiators. Resolute Reinforcements. I kind of like this play. We could have Essence Scattered, but I'm okay with that. 
Because now, we've put him in a very bad spot. We did have to tap out, which you don't want to do, which I shouldn't have done, but I felt... There's the Elsbeth, which is fine. Right. Let's clean up this town. Show them what you've got. Do they give a plus one? Do they give it lifelink? No, they give it flying. I don't know if they can attack them. There's that card draw. There's a paratrooper. We missed the land drop. So I think we just have to pull back and attempt to kick. That is a Mondrak. We can we can kick it. it was, this this is the play style. I told you the first thing that happens is that counter that creature goes on the field. Then they have to pay. I wouldn't surprise it wouldn't surprise me if they upticked Elsbeth and gave it lifelink. Let's do this together. If they give it flying, though, no, big mistake. Because now wedding f festivity will flip. Where does it flip next turn? Oh yeah, no, no, they all their creatures got the plus one plus one already. Um, they give that, they give that. I think we just have to, I think we just have to attack them. They're going to block, but we're going to pump with the ambush paratrooper. So we at least get rid of one of their tokens. Now they could minus seven, create five five creatures with flying. And I think they may do that because we can easily flood out. Lisa. Okay. Now I know where they're at. Yeah. Alright. These streets are rough. We'll light up every dark corner. Alright, so now we know that they do play Elsbeths. So we can get rid of the essence scatters. We can bring in disdainful stroke. Uh, actually, we'll get rid of a syncopate for another disdainful stroke. Get rid of a syncopate and... Mm. Two curates for two valor stances. Oh, never mind. Uh, we'll put two valor stances in. We'll take a Yoshin Tactician. We'll keep the Yoshin Tactician out. And we'll just go a little bit more counter spell heavy. Especially with the Disdainful Stroke. So we can counter the Mondrak, the Elsbeth, the, the Liza. Like, now that I know that that is in, we will play first always. And that is beautiful. As beautifully perfect to land a Yoshin Tactician, a timely interference, but more importantly, disdainful stroke. And an alchemist retrieval. So if they play another tap land or just another land and can't do anything, I think we paratrooper. Yeah, I think I think we ambush paratrooper here. Get the pain train going. Now, if we drew a land, we could, you know, bring in that other frontliner. But I think we might need to. I'm gonna timely interference my own paratrooper to draw a card. Okay. Ugh. That is horrible. Right now, we're cooking and we're missing land drops. So this deck is potent because now we have a protecting negotiators, a disdainful stroke. Please try to Mondrak. She did edict. She 
Your dad's edict. All right, we'll get rid of that. I think we have to alchemist retrieval again and hope that we get a land. Oops, wrong card. <laughs> Oops, that was a horrible misplay on me. I think I just may have cost me the game. I think I may have just cost me the game. Thrun. All right, so now we get it. <laughs> Does it have reach? No, it doesn't. So I think we, tactician, sack it to get two more points into the paratrooper. And then hold back <laughs> and hope that we get to counter something with a disdainful stroke or two that we have in the hand. I, I totally forgot that wasn't a timely interference. See, this is one of the things that we needed to do. That's why we boarded in disdainful strokes. You play a planes. Obviously attack it for five, you have to. All right, cool. That's a land. I can frontliner. We got to attack with a paratrooper. We do have a timely interference. But if they target anything, we can Zephyr Sentinel. But I think it's just going to be disdainful stroke timely interference. Yeah, we got to destroke the Elsbeth. We could actually timely interference Thrun. Oh no, never mind. We can't. Well, let's at least timely interference and get another draw in. So now we're down to 11. <laughs> uh, I think right now we can frontliner. Swing in for three. Then attempt a Zephyr Sentinel. Back the frontliner. Survivor of Corliss. We have got them in a very bad spot, unless they have a board wipe. Sarah Paragon. Here goes the timely interference. <laughs> now, Survivor can block that. That's not what we wanted to see. Um, Paragon. Paragon gets in for three. I mean, you know what? We got to YOLO it. We're dead next turn anyway. But I'm taking that Paragon with me. And we'll give him the good game and let us take us down to zero as, my gosh, for a $5 budget deck, this, this held up against a premier deck in the format right now. I mean, we have Mondrax, we have Paragons, we have Elsbeths, Rabble Rousings, and we were still able to put up a very good fight. Very good fight. And if I didn't misplay, I, I think we win that game. <laughs> but I horribly misplayed. 
And now we're going to go into another game, and that should be it. Um, I just want to see. No, you know what? I think we'll just leave it at that. Um, we'll leave it at that, folks. Uh, as I said, we're going to pull back the deck again. I'm doing this all in one take, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Blue-white micro-budget soldiers put up a heck of a fight in that game. As I said, this is meant for standard. This is meant for you to go spend a couple of dollars, go to an F&M, hopefully have some fun, and have a very focused deck here. Uh, this deck performed great in testing. And this is the first time I had I actually had to play it with the, up, with the new cards I had to put in because things got priced out. But even still... It did phenomenally well. Uh, we almost got that, too. If I didn't misplay, I could have had at least a couple more points of damage on the board. But that being said, Blue White Soldier Micro Budget Deck. My name's Dom Douglas, and may your top deck always be mythic. Man, we almost had that one.